to Market on Close. I'm Marley Caden alongside Sam Vadas in New York. Let's turn our attention to the world of quantum computing and welcome in our next guest. Joining us now in our Chicago headquarters is Yoon, uh, the CEO of Bolt Technology. Yoon, thank you so much for being with us today, taking the time to join us here in studio. Now, you warned that quantum risk is coming. For investors and viewers who don't live in cryptography, what does that actually mean? So quantum computing is a new way of computing and it's hardware based and uh, it, it breaks down as a completely different way of computing versus semiconductors. And semiconductors, you're very familiar with the three companies that, that basically uh, take over that whole world, which is Intel, ASML, and TSMC. The world sees quantum computing as an undeniable advantage if you could get there first and if you can do it efficiently. And the main problem for things like crypto is that um, quantum computing can break uh, cryptography. The, the most popular cryptography algorithms that we use to protect our digital assets, like on blockchains, uh, can be broken. And that is the main threat, the main risk. So the idea is that if you know there's a risk and you can quantify it, and you know that there's progress being made because there's actual nation states putting a lot of money towards quantum computing uh, research, um, you have to do something because it's a really bad time to build a boat when the flood waters are rising. So you need to do something, take care of it, especially when you have the solutions today. And so that, that's, a, that's a big thing. Yeah, you raise such an interesting point because, I mean, we're talking about the risks and potentially what we can do to address that before we've even really got to the stages where quantum computing is part of our lives. So I suppose that's good that regulation and policy can grow with it. But, you know, here we talk about stocks all the time that are really catching a bid lately, huge amount of capital that's being poured into some of these names. You know, I can rattle off a few like Ion Q, D Wave. We talk about these names all the time um, that have really shot up over the last course of the year um, on this thinking that this is going to be sort of revolutionary technology that's going to change our lives. Um, it was interesting that, you know, Jensen Huang sort of seemingly pulled the rug from underneath all that excitement earlier this year, saying, hey, hold on a second, you're ahead of your time. But now we're seeing a lot more traction uh, that's been gaining in this market. So, how should investors be thinking about this? So I, I think what we found from uh, that incident with Jensen Huang is that you got to be careful what you say. And, um, you know, it's very interesting that in a major conference like a month or two later, he did a complete 180 and then NVIDIA started, um, you know, investing in some of these quantum research companies. So, you know, I think, I think being informed is very, very uh, important. And also, you know, it doesn't matter. I think there's a lot of questions going around, like, when is it going to be? When, when, when are we going to have this powerful enough quantum computer that could break the cryptography on blockchains? Um, it's becoming less and less important because Congress put into place the Quantum Preparedness Act back in 2022. And because last year, our national standards agency called the NIST um, approved three cryptographic standards that are quantum resilient and they call that post-quantum cryptography. And uh, so now we have the tools to replace our current cryptography with quantum resistant uh, cryptography and that can serve the purpose of defending your assets on blockchains uh, for good. Now, but there's other complications. The other complications is that there's a, there's a fundamental truth in cryptography that there's only ever been one provable cipher. It's called a one-time pad. Um, it's impractical to use on the networks. So we don't really use it much on digital commerce. That means the implication is that everything else that we've been using and is being proposed for quantum resilience is at risk. Anytime these can be um, vulnerable and overnight they could say, hey, we're gonna deprecate that. We're not gonna use that anymore. And that has already happened in this long nine year process to select these post quantum um, cryptography algorithms, two of them, two, two of the leading runners failed overnight. So this is a real risk. And so if you take a look at the standards that are coming out, there's a lot of varieties. So we have already like 26 in the pipeline in terms of variants. And how do you choose? So the best idea is to really be flexible, be able to be what's called crypto agility. So it's a new way of doing things where you could change cryptography on your digital asset at the owner's speed. 
which is a very, very different concept because currently the way blockchain is set up, everybody uses the same locks. It's like having the same locks on every house door. But now you're going to have a choice and you get to make the choices uh, when you want to, whenever you, know, you deem the risk is high. So, Yoon, you bring up this concept of crypto agility. And I have, a, I guess, a two-part question here. Sure. The first part is, which blockchains are already taking this threat seriously and are taking what you would call a crypto agile approach here? And also, at what point does quantum preparedness and being crypto agile become a differentiator in how investors value blockchains and tokens? So you have a very good question is that there's um, probably at least a dozen or more efforts on every different type of blockchain that's out there, both private and public. So you know, public meaning Ethereum, Bitcoin, private. There's a lot of private blockchains that you've never heard of. Uh, Canton being one of them, DTCC, the Depository Trust Clearing Corp has another one. And um, they're all concerned, but they're coming late into the game and um, they're looking at which one do we pick out of this you know, first 18 and then the 26. There's gonna be more because we've enjoyed this um, sort of you know, authority on cryptography for decades through the US's NIST Institute, um, but no longer. When it comes to post-quantum cryptography, you're gonna have standards coming out of South Korea, standards coming out of China, um, Europe, some countries in Europe are looking at setting up their own standards organizations. So you're going to have cross-jurisdictional cryptographic um, requirements. So everybody has to be crypto agile. They have to think that way. Choosing one is not the answer because it costs a lot of time and money to transition from one cryptography to another if you fix it, if you make it static. Um, the trick is how do you make it very, very dynamic and flexible so that um, you could change on a dime, right? And what we wanna do is propose the idea that you do this and give the control to the asset owner, which is the right thing to do. It's your digital asset, you should protect it the way you want to. And we think that is the best idea. It future proofs all blockchains. And we think that for blockchains, there's a lot of attention to it because it's the first time in mass finance, in modern finance, where the cryptography algorithm actually protects a asset value, right? So we've never had that. We've always had gates and we've had you know, moats and you know, castles. No longer, this is your asset. You should protect it the way you want to because that is the only barrier between you and somebody else who could take it. Yoon, I want to pick up on one of those thoughts, actually. I mean, you, you started your career here on Wall Street um, and you were sort of building trading systems. You've held several roles at Goldman and Credit Suisse and now you've yep. obviously founded Nuts and Bolts, which I really <laughs> like. But you're just one guy. You're obviously trying to do it um, to address uh, the risks that you see. But you, you raise a really interesting point around what's happening internationally. No doubt there's this sort of growing paranoia in you know, different countries. Um, they're at sort of different stages as to you know, when they believe um, this is really going to become a risk for them. What are you seeing as far as you know, what governments are doing with regards to regulation and policy here. So I think you mentioned earlier that there's a lot of um, craziness kind of going into the markets where publicly traded quantum comp companies have shot through the roof sometimes. They're very volatile stocks. Um, and you see how much money is going into those companies, but that's mostly private money. You got some state government monies coming into, you know, certain companies, but you're not counting all the, all the government money that's going directly to companies that you've never heard of. And if you look at how much China is spending on quantum research, it dwarfs anything else that, that we could even imagine, right? They, they have programs that are out in space already. So, so this is not just a um, you know, technological, who's got the next best you know, uh, computing power. This is for information supremacy on a national level. So this, this will affect national security concerns all over the globe and uh, we have to do something about it and everybody is doing that and that's why the regulations and the time constraints we don't see them going out any further they're actually contracting everybody is trying to be prepared even faster than ever before and so you could see that can you say that everybody is wrong i don't think so i think at this point you have so many eyes and so much validation that this stuff is real the risk is real 
But the best part is that we actually have recognized, validated solutions that we're looking at. And, uh, and, and the, now the method is, how do you do this quickly and as flexibly as possible, knowing the risks of cryptography to begin with? Well, Yoon, we appreciate you taking the time to come speak with us in studio today about this very important topic. Mm -hmm. And one, too, that many guests that we've spoken to as we head into 2026 say quantum will be a theme that will be tip of the tongue for everyone next year. So we appreciate you highlighting this as we close out 2025 here. That's Yoon, uh, the CEO of Bolts Technology.